in the same way that it was very clear to me almost five years ago that I should run for mayor of Atlanta. It is abundantly clear to me today that it is time to pass the baton on to someone else. She's a rising Democratic star, was rumored to be on the short list for Joe Biden's running mate, and yet last week she shocked everyone by announcing she won't run for another term as mayor of Atlanta. Like Andre 3000, this mayor made sure that the nation knew the South got something to say. Joining me now, Atlanta Mayor Keisha Lance Bottom. Madam Mayor, I'm so happy to have you here. Thanks for joining us on a Saturday. This is actually your Cross Connection debut, so how lucky are we? Uh, I'll start out with the question. Oh, thank you so much, Madam. I appreciate that. I'm going to start out with the question I think everybody wants to know that you've been asked a lot. Why exactly are you leaving? You know, Tiffany, I sat down and I, I wrote two letters to Atlanta. One was a letter saying goodbye, and another was a letter that if I stayed. And remarkably, they were very similar. Just in um, speaking of the things that we have been able to accomplish throughout my term, when we came into office in January of 2018, we faced a cyber attack just three months later that took down our system's biggest cyber attack, ransomware attack in municipal history. There is this ever looming federal investigation into the last administration, uh, the social justice movement that the country faced, the pandemic, and there were so many challenges that we face and that each time we just exceeded all expectations. And so I wanted to leave at whatever point I left uh, being mayor from a position of strength and not weakness. I polled my, my favorable numbers were close to 70%. Uh, I would win without a runoff if the election were had to, held today. I was able to have a very successful fundraiser, most successful in the history of Atlanta with President Joe Biden. And all of these things made me feel so very proud of what we have accomplished. But, you know, when you pray, you have to be prepared for the answer. And what I knew in my heart is that it was time to pass the baton on to someone else. So I still have until the first Tuesday in January to serve as mayor of Atlanta. I'm in good health, my family as well. So it really is from a position of strength, not weakness, that I made this decision. Well, on, on the rest, I want to move to some issues happening in Atlanta because you do have a while to serve in mayor. And I'm just curious to get your take. How will you as mayor handle the CDC guidelines around this mask mandate? Are you going to uh, enforce them? Or are you going to still encourage people to keep their mask on indoors, outdoors? What's your take? So this is very challenging for us and especially running an organization with public facilities. But what we have decided to do is to still require people to wear masks inside of our public facilities, such as City Hall, our recreation centers, et cetera. And partially because we don't have the ability to even ask our employees for privacy reasons, whether or not they have been vaccinated or we can't mandate them to give us that information. And you know, with minority populations, there's still a lot of hesitancy in getting the vaccine. Um, we know with our police department and our fire department, our rates are not as high as we would like for them to be. So we are still going to ask that when we open up City Hall and our other city facilities, that people still wear masks inside, but removing those mandates um, in our parks and, and um, other outdoor public facilities. And Brian Kemp, Governor Brian Kemp, you guys have sparred before. He uh, has pulled unemployment benefits um, for people who so desperately need it. I'm just curious how you think that decision is going to impact the citizens of Atlanta. It's a terrible decision. There's still so many people just struggling to still get their benefits. And to remove uh, benefits when we have not fully recovered and, and fully turned the corner during this pandemic, it's heartless and it's unfortunate because there's so many people who are relying on these benefits to keep food on their table, to make ends meet. And so many uh, children have not returned to school full time. So there are many people who can't afford to go back to work and have child care uh, as their children are still navigating virtual learning. So again, we are being recognized across the country for absolutely the wrong thing. It has been poor decision after poor decision on top of bad decisions as it relates to this pandemic. 
You brought up the uh, previous administration and the federal investigation into your predecessor, Mayor Kasim Reed. I find this very fascinating because you guys were close. You were allies. I think he helped usher you uh, into this position. Obviously, you achieved it on your own, but he was certainly helpful. I want you to take a listen to something he said on the Frank Ski Morning Show, number one uh, urban uh, morning show in Atlanta. Take a listen. I'll get your reaction on the other side. I think that the level of crime and violence is is wholly unacceptable and that we're not doing enough and it's not COVID driven. Um, there are spikes in cities around the country, but they're not 60 percent spikes. Mm. And candidly, I believe if there was a 15 percent spike, uh, spike or a 20 percent spike, then people would understand that some of that is driven or COVID related, but but not 60 percent. I mean, this is a shot taken at you. What's the status of your relationship now and where and when did it all go left? Well, you know, Tiffany, I don't believe in kicking people when they are down. And that's the reason I did not publicly condemn Mayor Reed and the investigation into his administration. Uh, but at the first opportunity uh, that he seems to think that I was in a weakened position, He's taken the opportunity to take shots at me. So clearly he's interested in being mayor again, but I think the people of Atlanta will have to look at his history and make a decision accordingly. So that's interesting because if uh, former Mayor Kasim Reed got in, uh, there are a lot of people on city council who uh, are in pounce position to run. Um, you know, I care very deeply for the city of Atlanta. And I think there's something to be said about a city that's uh, majority populated by African-Americans. The black vote there is the base vote. If you have a slew of candidates who are all black, is it a possibility that they would split the vote and that Atlanta, a majority minority city, could see a white mayor? Well, that was the concern um, going into my last election for many. But at the end of the day, uh, being mayor of Atlanta, it, it's, it goes to the person who takes it, who runs a solid campaign, who has a solid record to run on. That was the case when I ran, and I know it will be the case this time. Uh, but even as we uh, talk about crime in the city, we are having a spike in crime in this city. But there is a spike in crime across the nation. We are emerging from a pandemic. So anyone, whether it be Mayor Reed or anyone else who doesn't think that this is COVID driven, is someone who is out of touch with reality. And I think it's gonna be incumbent upon the next mayor of this city uh, to make sure that we continue the progress in addressing those systemic issues that are leading people to these choices. A conversation I've had repeatedly with President Biden is the mental health aspect. As people emerge from COVID, healing physically, people have to heal emotionally and mentally as well. And I think it's gonna be important to put resources behind that. President Biden uh, has given um, us credit for the $5 billion in the American Rescue Plan towards Cure Balance Initiatives, uh, Balance Intervention Initiatives. And I think for any candidate to ignore the correlation between COVID is a candidate who should not be elected mayor of Atlanta. Uh, final question, Madam Mayor. The uh, Stacey Abrams has not declared a run for governor at this point. I'm curious, as you weigh your options and, and consider your political future, what consideration are you giving to running for governor? And if that's even a thought of yours, what would impact you to decide in the affirmative to run? Now, Tiffany, I have several more months that I will be privileged to serve as mayor of Atlanta. And I have to look at all of the opportunities that will be before me, whether or not uh, it is to run for another office or whether or not it's to go into the private sector or any number of things that um, I will have to consider, hopefully. Um, I, I do know this is going to be an important election in Georgia. Of course, Senator Warnock will be back on the ballot. So it's going to be important to have a strong candidate at the top of that ticket as a Democrat running for governor. Uh, but all of the constitutional officers will be on the ballot. Offices will be on the ballot. So I will take time in the same way that I, I prayed and gave careful consideration to running for mayor and careful consideration in prayer uh, to saying that I would not seek another term. I'll do the same thing for my next season in life and we'll see uh, what the future holds. 
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.